Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Nick P and Brian R. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Replying to Whole Mars, Elon said, 13 years is a long tour of duty. Zach will spend time with friends and family and then do something else. If I was in charge of hiring at Rivian or Lucid, I would be throwing the bank at him. Please check on this one if it applies to you, but Treb on X said his Tesla sales advisor told him the FSD transfer process was modified again, saying you no longer have to configure your new vehicle with FSD because apparently they were charging tax on that $15,000 amount for the new FSD subscription, but now you don't have to choose that option and it could save you over $1,000 on that tax alone. So if you're considering this FSD transfer for quarter three only, be sure to keep this in mind. Over the past few days, we've heard about the reports that Project Highland has started trial production and is expected to start mass production in September, deliveries in October. The cost could be around 27.7 thousand US dollars, but I wanted to touch on it'll use the 66 kilowatt hour M3P battery, which is LFMP chemistry, lithium iron manganese phosphate. For what it's worth, that does check out with prior rumors where Chris Zhang said it was going to use LFMP, same battery size, and an EPA range of about 298 miles. That's EPA range, not WLTP. And he didn't mention if that was for the rear wheel drive or the performance variant, but either way, we should just wait for official numbers anyway. That said, I do think we should be expecting some level of a range increased with the Highland release, and the question will be on the charging curve. Currently, the Model 3 was using an LFP 60 kilowatt hour pack with a charging speed max of about 170 kilowatts. If the speculation is true, we get an additional six kilowatt hours and we'll see on the charging speed. So could we get the first Project Highland and the first Cybertruck deliveries in October? Possibly. There are a lot of people this morning saying that Tesla has officially launched its third party app store, but I don't think we're there just yet. Let me explain why. For a long time, Tesla customers were using unofficial third-party apps like Teslafy, Teslab, and it's really just the way that these apps actually communicated with Tesla and what types of data they had access to. But if you go back to the end of June this year, not a Tesla app showed us some screenshots on your web, on your Tesla profile, you could begin to manage official third-party apps, but at the time you couldn't actually add any yet. Fast forward to today and the first official third-party app, only really, as far as I can tell, through mobile and the web is Standard Fleet, a Tesla ride sharing and EV sharing company that operates globally. Standard Fleet has online and mobile tools to ensure EV fleets are managed efficiently and profitably. We've talked about companies like Revel doing ride sharing with Model Ys in New York in the past, but this company and others are supporting Standard Fleet. Going to Standard Fleet's help articles, scrolling down, you'll find this one, sign in with Tesla, and it says, this system hosted and managed by Tesla provides a direct way to authorize Standard Fleet to connect to your vehicles. From there, on a Tesla hosted page, you grant access to certain information and you can actually revoke Standard Fleet's access at any time on tesla.com. And they're saying logging in this way does not give your passwords to Standard Fleet at all. And Tesla Roddy shared this screenshot of a profile with Standard Fleet now showing up and the ability to manage it right through your Tesla security dashboard. But the distinction we need to make. We need to ensure we don't conflate third-party app access via mobile and web with an actual app inside of the Tesla UI dash in the vehicles. I could be wrong here, but as far as I can tell, there's not going to be a standard fleet icon in your Tesla vehicle's screen. Now, in fairness, Tesla officially allowing some of these third parties to directly pull some of their data direct from Tesla is absolutely a great first step in that direction, but having some of these apps on your Tesla vehicle screen is a different thing than just allowing apps via the web or mobile to access Access that data. For me personally, I'm not holding my breath for an actual app store in the Tesla vehicle until autonomy is here because then you'll have a lot of developers and entrepreneurs that just have more use cases for building some of these apps for inside Tesla vehicles. And by that time, the fleet will continually grow and it just becomes more and more attractive for those developers. I'm just not sure we're there yet, but again, this is a step in the right direction. This was a great video by AI Driver comparing the difference between hardware Hardware 3 and Hardware 4 when it comes to camera clarity.
And just a note from yesterday on that Hardware 4 segment where Green the Only said that Hardware 4 had about half the RAM and storage as Hardware 3, that was really only on the entertainment side, meaning the infotainment in the vehicle. So I just wanted to make that clear from yesterday. Esther is telling us that all V3 superchargers at Giga Berlin will be replaced for V4 stalls. She then shared a few images. Here is one of those. And then Sawyer shared this image showing some of the V4 stalls already up at Giga Berlin. So naturally the question becomes, will Tesla begin replacing V3 stalls in the real world, not at a Giga factory? Personally, I'd be surprised if they did. I would just imagine they would roll out more V4 stalls and leave the V3 ones as is, but maybe in select locations, we do see a replacement of sorts. But obviously having V4 stalls at your gigafactories makes the most sense just for testing purposes, if nothing else. Tesla North America tweeted 3,200 plus supercharger posts added in North America over the last six months. So if you have about 10 per station, that's about 320 locations, then per year that's about 640. 640 stations per year in North America divided by 12 months is about 53 new stations every month being added in North America. Tesla and Energy Hub have teamed up to allow new access through the mobile app for Tesla Powerwall owners in Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. Essentially, the program is linking batteries across the states virtually to create virtual power plants. Depending on where you live and the size of your battery, you may be able to earn up to $1,500 per year for the power you provide to the grid if you're a Powerwall owner. For those of you in these states, I'll put Tesla's blog post on this partnership below. And yes, for this one, it's with or without solar. This really is such a cool program when you think about what's going on, connecting these houses statewide for this virtual power plant. And as the customer, you don't do anything after you're unrolled. The Tesla Powerwall does everything for you automatically. The more offerings like this in the more states and locations, the better. We got the weekly China insured number for Tesla, 12,800. Plugging that data into the table, if you wanted to compare it to the same week in quarter two, that number was 5,900, but that was during the time when Giga Shanghai was shut down for the Labor Day holiday for a few days. Zooming out in quarter two, through weeks one through five, Tesla was at 46.8 thousand, and through the same time frame in quarter three, we're at 44.3 thousand. This week alone boosting Q3 numbers by about 6,900 units relative to quarter two. As of today, GM is promising the 2024 Blazer, Equinox, Cadillac, Lyric, and soon to be revealed Escalade IQ will all feature vehicle to home charging. And GM said the whole retail portfolio of all TM vehicles will have vehicle to home by 2026. Important to note the current 2023 version of the Cadillac Lyric does not yet have vehicle to home charging. So far, this is just another promise from GM, but a great move because Tesla is not not doing this yet and it sounds like it's not something they will do so they don't cannibalize power wall sales but this would be a nice competitive advantage for GM if they can actually pull it off and start selling some of these EVs. Lucid dropped the official specs for the $250,000 Sapphire Edition, 0 to 60, 1.89 seconds. Their Halo car will have three motors, four driving modes, carbon ceramic brakes, aerodynamic package, sport seats, track tune suspension, and more. 1,234 horsepower and an EPA estimated range of 427 miles. Miles. Production of the Sapphire begins in September with deliveries following after. And the Sapphire will be built on a 900 volt plus charging system. Right now, Lucid also has three separate recalls out for its air vehicles, one of which covers all vehicles built to date. Two of them are going to be fixed by a software update. One has to do with a nut for the windshield wiper where they're essentially retorquing those nuts and they've already done it on about 2,400 vehicles with about 5.5 thousand yet to do. If you're wondering why Lucid stock is up about 12% so far today, I am too, but my guess would be because they reiterated their target of hitting 10,000 vehicles produced this year. This is good to see from ChargePoint, a new initiative spending millions of dollars to try to improve the uptime at its chargers. 
I just think it's kind of funny that this company has a whole project basically trying to get its product to work how it's supposed to work. ChargePoint now has a network operating center that's live as of this month to deliver 24 seven proactive monitoring to ensure any station issue almost can be instantly and remotely identified across their 243,000 active ports under management. This is cool. The NOC's machine learning and natural language capabilities will automatically process big data feeds and social media mentions to pinpoint individual charging stations with issues, and then they'll work on a 24 hour response time. Finally, ChargePoint is developing a comprehensive training and certification program for electrical contractors. They're expecting this program to go live early 2024. Rivian dropped its earnings, and one thing of note, they increased their production guidance for this year up to 52,000 from about 50,000 previously. And both Rivian's loss per share and the revenue numbers came in better than expectations. And RJ said driving the narrower than expected losses, they've achieved meaningful reductions in R1 and EDV vehicle unit cost across key components like materials, overhead, and logistics. Rivian reiterated it expects to reach positive gross profit sometime in 2024, and that was the catalyst that sent Tesla stock on its first parabolic move up. Rivian lost $412 million for the quarter and they have $10.2 billion in cash on hand. In the slide deck, they said in Q2, they produced 13.9 thousand and delivered 12.6 thousand vehicles, a 50% increase in production over the prior quarter. And that growth is supported by the continued ramp up of their in-house Enduro motor line. And I thought this was interesting. R1S represented 70% of their total R1 production in the quarter. It was the first quarter in which they produced more R1S vehicles than R1T. How about a little golf clap for Rivian? That's a solid quarter. We got a cool article from Forbes India on Tesla's new CFO, Vaibhav Tunisia. The former chairman of PricewaterhouseCoopers India who hired Vaibhav said right from the time he joined PwC, there was a sense of purpose in him. And he was somebody who sticks out in your memory. Through the 40 years or so at the firm, you tend to categorize people in different brackets and Vaibhav was always among the top stars, the three or four that stand out. And I know many of us have been mourning the loss of Zach's calming demeanor on the calls and the way he balances Elon, but the PwC chairman of India said what Vaibhav brings to the table apart from his sense of purpose is his excellent people skills. He's very social, is an excellent accountant, and on ethics is very straightforward. His standards are very high. That's really all we get on Tunisia from this article, but when you think about his Indian roots and his background and how people are talking about him and what he might mean to Tesla's future in India, how he can help navigate those dynamics, I don't know, I'm kind of low-key really excited to see what this guy is all about and hopefully we can hear from him personally soon. It appears as though Tesla has their guy for the Giga Nevada expansion that we've really heard crickets about since the beginning of this year. Michael Hildebrand on LinkedIn is now the Giga Nevada expansion and construction leader. His LinkedIn tells us he's been in this role since July of this year. Coming from Eli Lilly and Co, where most recently he was the executive director of projects for a two billion plus capital project building a manufacturing site. You know what that means, it's time for the drone operators to gather around Giga Nevada to keep us all informed. You can find me on X and Instagram, both linked below. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did and a huge thank you to all of my patreon supporters